Hey, what's up, mortals? It's Mickey Sawdust here with a new video for you. Welcome to Season 1, Episode 2 of What If Bakugo Died? Just wanted to greet you all by just saying, sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. Let's get started. Deku hadn't left his apartment in a week. Every time he thought he had the strength to get up and start the day, memories would come flooding back and he'd be paralyzed once again. He had received quite a few phone messages and texts from All Might. He asked if Deku was alright apologized for not being able to protect the students like he should have, and assured him that Todoroki and Kirishima had promised to keep one for all a secret. The texts came frequently, and Deku could sense the pain and urgency behind them. He only texted back once. I'm okay. It's kind of a relief to have two more people who know about our power. We can talk later. That was all he had to say. He didn't know what he'd do once he was back at school and had to face everyone. Yue had given the students the week off from school to cope with what had happened. A lot of the students had been talking to each other through a group chat, checking in on one another and agreeing to meet up before school started again. Deku hadn't participated in the discussion. He hadn't eaten or slept much, and could tell he had lost weight. He knew he should get up, eat, take a shower, clean his room, anything. But how did one move forward after losing someone so important? He heard a knock at his door. He suspected it was his mother. She had been diligently trying to help him this past week. She seemed to know just the right amount of love and patience to give. She let Deku have his space, but was also firm in suggesting he go outside or talk to her. He hated to let her down, but he wasn't ready for any of that yet. Sorry, Mom. I'll be out soon, promise. But the voice that came from the other side of the door surprised him. Midoriya, it's Ida. Your mother invited me in. Can we talk? Deku was so surprised he found that he had the strength to cross the room to his door. Ah, uh, give, give me a second. Deku quickly chained into some clothes and made his bed. He noticed how stained his pillow had become with his tears. He flipped it over and opened the door, averting his eyes from Ida's worried gaze. Midoriya, how are you? Ida asked, with a forced cheerfulness. Deku shrugged. He couldn't lie and say he was fine. He couldn't express all his pain, either. Suddenly, Ida hugged him. Deku was frozen at first, but then all his walls came down. He clung to his friend and cried. Where did the torrent of tears come from? He thought he had spent them all. How could one person cry this much? When the tears finally subsided, Deku pulled away. Thanks, Ida. I think I needed that. Ida smiled back at him. Why don't we get you a glass of water and sit down to talk? Deku nodded and led Ida into his kitchen. His mom was there, washing dishes. Izuku! You're up! I'm so glad! I hope you don't mind that I let your friend in. Deku shook his head. No, it's fine. Thanks, Mom. Well, I'll let you talk. There are some snacks and juice on the table for you. His mother hurried away to give the boy some privacy. Deku and Ida sat down. Deku tried for a smile. So the class rep is making house calls now, huh? Ida managed a dry chuckle. <laughs> yes, but I don't think I can honestly call myself class rep anymore. Deku was stunned. What? What? Why? Because I failed. I couldn't get to the pro heroes in time. So many people suffered because I wasn't good enough. Ida looked down, jaw clenched. Ida, no, that's not true. None of that was your fault. You did the best you could. Deku paused. He blinked hard to clear his vision. We... we all have regrets about that day. Everyone wishes they could have done more, but Ida, I'm just glad you and the others are okay. Ida sniffed. He was starting to tear up as well. <laughs> Thanks, Midoriya. To hear you say that, well, it gives me hope that I might be forgiven. And I promise to work really hard so I won't let anyone down ever again. Deku smiled a bit. Ida was starting to sound a little like him. A anyway, Ida continued, there's another reason for my visit apart from checking on you. I was contacted by Principal Nezu, he told me that Bakugo's parents would like to meet with me. I guess because I'm our class representative and all. 
Deku bit his lip. He hadn't given any thought to Bakugo's parents. How selfish. They must be hurting most of all. I think we'll be discussing the funeral, Ida continued. I was wondering if you'd like to come with me. I heard that you, Kirishima, and Todoroki were all with Bakugo when... it happened. Yeah, I... I owe it to them. I'll come. Deku knew he had to be brave and own up to his mistakes. Bakugo had died to protect him. He wouldn't let that sacrifice go unnoticed. Wonderful, thanks. Now I just need to talk to Kirishima and Todoroki. Would you like to join? As much as he didn't want to relive that day, Deku was prodded by the fact that his classmates had been going through more than he thought. Maybe Kirishima and Todoroki were having regrets, fears, and problems of their own. He wanted to help. Sure. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Staying safe online is an ever-growing difficulty, and hackers could exploit you. NordVPN allows you to change your IP address, making you harder to track, securing your privacy. In addition to providing you with safe passage through the web, you can also expand the reach of your favorite streaming services. Are you tired of going through two, three, or even four streaming services to watch your favorite anime? Well, with NordVPN, you can change your country and be able to binge shows like My Hero Academia, Naruto, and many others on your favorite streaming service with just a press of a button. Check out the link in the description to get 72% off when buying two years for $3.29 a month. This is a deal for a limited time. And thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. A while later, Ida and Deku were standing in front of Kirishima's house. Ida had texted ahead of time to let him know they were coming. The front door slowly opened, and Kirishima stepped out. He looked terrible. His normally spiked up hair was down, and he had dark circles under his eyes, and he didn't have his usual sharp tooth grin. He shuffled out of the house wearing a baggy t-shirt, sweatpants, and red crocs. Hey, Midoriya, Ida, thanks for coming by. His voice sounded ragged. Deku stepped up to him and tried for a smile. It probably came across as more of a grimace. Hello, Kirishima. Are you... are you doing all right? Kirishima rubbed his neck. He took a while to answer. I'm probably doing about as well as you are. That bad, huh? Deku replied. There was an awkward silence for a while before Ida put an arm around the two of them. I won't promise that things will be okay or that they'll get better. But I think talking to one another means that we're heading in the right direction. Yeah, Kirishima agreed. And I think talking to Bakugo's parents is the right step to take next. But first we need to speak to Todoroki, Deku said. Do any of you have his number? He is a very private person, Ida commented. I didn't get his cell phone number, but I was able to procure his home phone from Principal Nezu. Ida dialed the number and then put his phone on speaker. The boys huddled around. Hello, Todoroki residents, Fuyumi speaking. Hello, ma'am, Ida started. We are students from UA High and are classmates of Shoto Todoroki. Can we speak with him, please? The girl, Fuyumi, gasped. The sound became muted as she put her hand over the receiver. Shoto, your friends are on the phone for you. She removed her hand and addressed Ida. He'll be right here. The phone was passed off. Hello, Todoroki's monotone voice spoke. Greetings, Todoroki, Ida said. How are you? There was a pause. Fine. Ida struggled to find his next words. Ah, good. Um, we were wondering if you would like to meet to discuss the events of the previous week. We? Todoroki answered. Yes, Ida said. I'm currently with Midoriya and Kirishima. Midoriya's there? Todoroki asked. Y yeah, I I'm here, Deku replied. He locked eyes with Kirishima. They both knew why Todoroki would be wondering that. Would you like to meet outside of UA? Kirishima asked into the phone. At first, Deku was afraid that Todoroki would decline. But then he sighed and said, <sighs> I can be there in half an hour. Excellent, Ida said. We will see you soon. And then he hung up. The three of them started walking to the school. They were all silent for the most part, except for the occasional comment about the weather. 
or other trivial items. Deku remained lost in thought, going over what he would say to Bakugo's parents and what he would tell Todoroki and Kirishima about his and All Might's secret. Both things weighed heavy on his shoulders. They finally arrived at the entrance of Yue. Todoroki was already there. Deku was surprised to see that he looked almost as disheveled as the rest of them. Usually he was so put together and nonchalant, but now his normally neat, two-toned hair looked a bit unkempt, and he dragged his feet a bit. It also looked as if Todoroki had been itching at the scar on the left side of his face. It was a deeper red and had scratch marks just above his brow. Todoroki got right to the point. You said you wanted to talk about what happened at the USJ. Yes, Ida replied. But, more specifically, we were wondering if you'd like to share that information with Bakugo's parents. Todoroki shifted. Are you sure they want to hear what we have to say? Deku interjected. I think they deserve to know everything. It might even be a comfort if we can say how brave Kachan was. He had to stop talking as tears welled in his eyes. Kirishima took over. We were the last ones with him. We heard his dying words. I think any parent would want that closure. Don't you? Todoroki's eyes clouded over a bit. He rubbed at his scar. Maybe, he muttered. You don't have to come if you don't want to, Ida assured him. I know it must be hard to bring up that day, but I thought talking it out could bring a little bit of healing to everyone. Todoroki put his hands in his pockets and stared at the ground. And then he looked up at the school building behind him. I think I should go too, he said to Ida. Then he turned to the other two. But I'd like to talk to Midori and Kirishima first, if that's all right. Sure, Deku said hesitantly. Kirishima patted Deku's back. It's okay with me. Ida looked between the three of them. Okay, if we're all in agreement, I'll contact Principal Nezu. He can arrange a meeting between us. He quickly called the principal and then disclosed the details to the others. Bakugo's parents would be able to meet with them the next day. Principal Nezu would reserve a classroom for them. All Might and Recover Girl would also be present. We'll meet at noon, Ida concluded. You all will be able to make it. They all said yes. Then I'll see you tomorrow, Ida said. He said goodbye and left. After Ida was gone, Deku took a deep breath and faced Kirishima and Todoroki. So I guess I have a lot of explaining to do. The two nodded. I heard All Might already spoke to you. How much did he tell you? Deku asked. Well, Kirishima started. He explained how he has an injury that prevents him from being All Might all the time. That's why he changed. He also said he was looking for someone to pass the mantle of symbol of peace to. And his quirk, Todoroki added. All Might said that his power is one that is able to be handed from one person to another. It's called One for All, and he chose you to be the one to receive it. Deku blushed. Yup, that's about the gist of it. It's not something we want the world to know about yet. Realizing that All Might is vulnerable could make him an even bigger target, so you have to keep it a secret. Got it, Kirishima said. I won't tell anyone, Todoroki promised. Just one more question, though. Deku gulped. Oh, yeah? Are you All Might's kid or something? No! What? No! Deku exclaimed. Todoroki shrugged. Just checking. Thank you all for sticking around and I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. First, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials have got you covered. Our We the Celestials My Hero Academia Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I'd like to extend an invitation to you to join the team. The only caveat being that we only accept members ages 16 and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whatever category fulfills your interest by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it for today's video, so thank you all for watching, and have a divine day.